Hello and welcome to another video of the IT Career Guide YouTube channel. In today's video I want to talk about the help desk job in a call center and what uh, the day in the life of such a help desk technician looks like. So first of all if you work in a call center you will have to follow certain rules and schedules. So work in a call center is very structured. So you usually have fixed working hours, a fixed schedule. You know exactly when you come, when you need to log into the systems, and you know exactly when you have time for a break. And in between, well, you have to do the actual work. So that's really um, the first portion that you need to know. So the so the first thing that you need to know really is the fixed schedule. So let's say you come in at seven o'clock, you work for three and a half hours, you have a 30 minute break or a 60 minute break and then you work another four hours, four and a half hours, whatever your schedule looks like. And um, some call centers uh, have you work eight hours, others do seven or seven and a half, depending on uh, what the situation is. So, but think about fixed schedule, fixed start time, fixed end times. It's actually really helpful because you know exactly when you um, punch the clock and you leave work. So if you are getting new into IT and you wanna use time to study, um, well, that's really helpful because now you can know, okay, I leave at four o'clock. I have enough time available to study for 45 minutes before going home or you go home and then study there. When I worked in a call center, um, I used this fixed schedule really to, okay, I leave work, I stay in my car, I used uh, books and was sitting in my car for 45 minutes before going home and um, I did the time studying. So I had an easy commute at that point in time, so I was not stuck in traffic. But even if you are stuck in traffic, use the time efficiently, maybe use an audiobook. But uh, let's get back to the day in the life of a help desk technician in a call center. When you come into work, you log into the different systems. So you probably have two systems to log into. One is the phone system, one is the help desk ticketing system. So once you log in, the clock is ticking and you, are, and you start taking calls. Calls can be routed to you automatically or you might have to pick them from the queue. So it depends on the system. But again, once you log in, the clock is ticking and you start taking calls, you work with customers, you solve their problems. Again, the base understanding here as well is that you have a certain technical skill set. So um, you really come fully equipped to work and uh, get the day going. So you have a fixed schedule. You know when you come into work, you log into the systems. Uh, now you're ready to go. So calls are rolling in and you take the calls, work with the customer problems and hopefully resolve them. So another part of your job is, um, well, if it's quiet and you don't have any calls coming in, take a look at the ticket queue. So working in a call center just not only means taking phone calls and um, helping customers via phone, but there could be an additional ticket queue where you work on tickets that came in other means. So it could be that um, tickets were submitted through a self-service portal, or you had calls that were not resolved from the day before that you need to follow up with. So not every problem can be resolved in, in one go. So sometimes uh, it's like, okay, you have to escalate the call to a different um, ticket queue, or maybe you take ownership of a problem. It's a larger problem. You tell the customer, okay, I'm not able to resolve this today, but I will take this problem. I will work with, let's say, a third party vendor uh, to get this problem resolved and I get back to you um, as soon as I have a resolution. So that could be that you have tickets assigned to you that are still open where you have follow up tasks to go through. And um, so when the call queue slows down and you have a little time there, then uh, you work on those incidents slash tickets. So what else is important to know in the day of a life of a help desk technician in a call center? So first of all, be aware that the uh, call centers really use uh, certain numbers and statistics to look at your performance. They look at how many calls are coming in, um, how busy is every technician. Working in a call center um, requires that you oblique to certain SLAs. SLAs are service level agreements. And service level agreements are nothing other than telling you exactly how much time you have to answer a call that, a call that is waiting in the queue. Um, it tells you exactly how much time you have to solve certain problems. 
an SLA will tell you exactly how much time you have before you need to reassign an incident to somebody else. So let's say if you are level one, you might have to assign it to a level two technician and um, get the customer off the call. So meaning the, you call, the customer calls in, you realize you cannot solve that problem in the, let's say, 10 minutes that you have, you will tell the customer, hey, I'm unable to um, resolve this issue here, but I will assign it to a technician on site and that person will come to your desk and help you to resolve the problem. So SLAs are time frames that specify exactly um, how long you have to do certain things and you are measured against those SLAs. So these measurements are also then called key performance indicators. So um, over time, your manager will be able to see, okay, it takes you a little longer than everyone else um, to answer your phone. So uh, let's say in a call center, phone, uh, uh, phone calls are coming in, they're sitting in a queue, you become available, one call is directed to your extension, and then it takes you a little longer to, re um, to answer that phone call. So um, there is a number associated with it, so of waiting. So let's say you have 10 seconds to answer the call, but it takes you 15 or 20 seconds to answer that call. That's a key performance, indi key performance indicator uh, that can be measured and your manager might uh, talk to you about those or you, your performance, your pay um, is dependent on that you meet certain uh, key performance indicators. So be aware in a call center, there's a lot of statistics running you have SLAs you're working against, you have key performance indicators that you are measured against, and it could impact your performance pay, your merit increases, a bonus, um, whatever it is. Or it could also mean if you're underperforming, that at a certain point in time, the company pulls the plug on you and um, they walk you out and, uh, well, that was it. Hopefully they give you enough opportunity in advance to be aware of where you are so that you can improve. But uh, performance indicators can work both ways. They can help you and they can help the company. As an example, when I worked in a call center uh, many, many years ago, um, I was always one of the top three performers taking most calls during the day. So that means I was able to A, answer quickly, um, resolve the problem quickly and get back into the queue and take another call. Uh, back then it was really um, a stressful job and I had days where I had over 100 phone calls. Granted, those were not super technical related problems. Um, it was more providing information and um, I was able to quickly um, turn over the call and move on to the next call. Of course, on other days I had uh, maybe 40 or 60 calls and uh, it was much more difficult, much more challenging. So, but uh, those are numbers where you are measured against your peers. So let's say I have 60 calls one day and the next day I only have 50. And uh, Joe in the cube next to me has 70 calls and uh, 80 calls compared. So it's just like, okay, Joe is able to do much more. Why is that? So, and then of course it needs to be looked at what type of work you're doing, what type of work Joe has been doing. So, but those are data points that are used uh, to determine how good or bad you are. So another thing for the day in the life of a call center technician, um, you need to understand at what point you need to escalate to your manager or when to reassign tickets to different queues. So that's very critical. So as the calls come in, you have to determine, yep, that is something I can do. Nope, that is something that needs to go straight into another queue. Or, okay, you start troubleshooting the problem. You need to look at the clock and you need to remember, okay, I'm reaching uh, my SLAs. I better um, transfer the call or reassign the ticket but you also need to hand it off appropriately. So there needs to be enough information. So when you work and you get these calls, documenting all the steps that you do, not in the full detail, but high level, is very critical. So you will work in an application like a ticketing help desk system or an ITSM tool and document the steps so that uh, if the problem returns, um, Another technician can look at the records that you put into the system. Okay, Joe did all these steps already. I don't have to do those again because we know it doesn't work. Or it helps a company to determine, okay, this is a, a situation that is recurrently happening. How can we fix it so it doesn't happen? So again, 
working in a call center, you're working in different systems, documenting your work is very important. It helps with the SLAs, it helps with the KPIs, but it also helps a larger uh, group and the company uh, to potentially provide better service. So to summarize one more time, when you work in a call center as a help desk technician, you will have a fixed schedule. You know exactly your work hours, you know exactly when to start, when you have breaks and uh, when you can leave and go home. You know you have to work in certain tools, so you have to log into a phone system, you will have to log into the help desk ticketing system, and calls will be routed to you. So it's really an ongoing process. You will have the ability to log out of that system, uh, take breaks, or even if you need to finish up a ticket with notes and everything, um, it's not like that you are bombarded with calls, so you have that ability. Uh, be aware your day-to-day -day tasks are measured, and you will be um, measured against those, not just for your own performance, you will be measured against your peers. So um, there are certain things that you need to be aware of as you work. So if you are not able to deliver an appropriate number of calls or resolutions, um, it will potentially count against you. On the other side, if you have a consistent performance or even outperform your peers, it might affect your um, bonus, your performance pay, your merit increases. So that's really uh, from a day in the life of a help desk technician in a call center type of scenario. It's very structured. Um, you know exactly what you get every day. You don't, of, don't know, of course, the content of the phone calls or the issues um, that your customers have when you call in. But usually in a call center type of environment, uh, it's the same type of problem. So you can build up experience and become really proficient in it. And uh, so it really helps um, from a structured approach if you look at it. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. I publish videos at least once a week so you can get notified uh, when I upload new videos as well. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.